So next we're going to add a rocket ship. Dun, dun, dun. And this one is going to be more brightly colored than anything we've done before so it pops out and then our spacey dark sky can go to the back and recede. I am going to start with a new layer. Whoops, not in my folder there. New layer. I'm gonna call this the fuselage. Or you can just call it rocket, that's fine too. Let me take that one off so that we don't get confused on what's what. So it doesn't really matter where you start on your drawing. We're just going to make this rocket and then position it later. I'm going to be drawing in a bright, maybe bright yellow. I don't think I have very much yellow on my drawing. And I don't know how to do it in clip paint, but I'm going to change my pencil to only draw an ellipse. Whoa, not that thick though. Let's change the thickness to like six. So I can only draw ovals. And I'm going to make two of these ovals by duplicating the layer, or you can just do a copy paste, whichever is easier. Get your move tool. I want two of them so that we can make a cylinder. You may have noticed on the rocket, one is big and one is narrow. So this second one, I'm going to use the transform, which I've just pressed control P, or you can go to select and pick transform right there to give you your little boxes and you can shrink it down just a little bit so that we will have a big oval, small oval, and then whoops, remember to hit enter when you're done or else it'll just pop back into place like mine just did. So once I get it where I want it, hit the enter key. I'm also going to add a new layer and I'm going to use my line tool in my little drop down menu so I can only draw straight lines. And this is going to be use so that I can line up my two ovals on the center of this line. So when you tap the, can not tap, but when you turn on the transform and you get those boxes, you can see that there's some right in the middle. That'll help me kind of put that right on the middle. If you have one oval over here, one oval over there, it's not going to look that good. So I'm going to try to line these up on the center. Get my other layer, control T so I can see my little boxes and this one's almost centered, there we go. Once you have them lined up, I'm going to collapse them down with my little down arrow button on my layer over here or else you can go to the layer menu and you can say merge down and it'll do the same thing. So now both of my ovals are on one layer. I can get rid, oh, actually I need the center line later. So I'm going to need, name this one center line. Move my ovals down a bit. I can still make sure they're centered by turning on the control T. And they don't have to be perfect, perfect. We would just want them close. Then I'll draw the edges of the rocket body. You can see over here that we need a line that goes from oval to oval. So I'm going to draw a line from that oval to that oval, that oval to that oval. And now we have our tube. Make sure that you're on the same layer as your ovals, not the same layer as the center line. And I'm going to take my paint bucket, change it to layer up at the top where it says reference. Change that one over to layer so that I can fill it in, fill that in, 
and leave that one alone. Next, we're going to add this top part, this kind of triangle piece. I'm going to switch colors over to red and get a new layer. Just in case I mess up, I don't want my hard work to go to waste. We'll call this the pointy end. <laughs> I don't know what the rocket term is. Pointy end. I'm going to grab my pencil tool again and up at the line menu, I'm going to change it into a curve. So this is kind of a wacky tool that every time you click, there's this line that follows you around and it curves the line depending on how many times you click. And then to get rid of this thing, if you're like, ah, I want to get rid of it, just double click where you are and it'll make it um, stroke or like paint. It'll paint it down and then you just hit Control Z because you don't want it. So with this tool, I'm going to go from the top of my line down to the edge, follow the curve around, and right back up to the top. And then it'll make a line. I'm going to put it over my center line so we can see what it did there. I'll get my paint bucket, fill it in, and you might have like a little wiggly edge right there. You just take your curve tool again and you can just come back and add a little bit to it, smooth it out. Or you can just change it back to freehand and you can freehand color it, that's fine too. Yeah. Oh, cat. Cat's doing, oh, sorry. <laughs> no problem. So we got the top of the rocket. And because this is on a different layer, you can erase the edges, clean up the edges without erasing the yellow fuselage part. Probably not even called that. I don't know. I, I played a, like an old computer game once where you used to build airplanes and they called the body that. But I don't know if it applies to rockets now when I think of it. Next, what do we got? We got the pointy part. We need a window so that our little astronaut or whoever's in there can look out. I'm going to get a new layer again. Call this window. Get a different color, maybe gray. And I will get my snap tool, my grid tool, click it where I want that circle to be and make my window. If you don't want to do it that way, you can also change back to an ellipse and you can just draw a circle. That's fine too. Many ways to do the same thing. But once you have that first circle, we're going to draw another circle inside of it. And the easiest way to do that is to just duplicate the layer. There's the button over here that will duplicate your layer, or you can go up to the layer menu and find where it says duplicate and it'll look like nothing happened. So you have to grab your move tool and move it to see like, oh, there it is. And I want this one to be slightly smaller. We know how to do that. Control T shrink it down and now you can move it until it looks good. Enter when you like it. And again, we need one for the outside and then one for the blue part in the middle. In fact, I'll just change it blue right now. So I still have two layers. I have the blue one on one layer and then the ring on the other layer. I'm going to activate my blue layer and add some 
effects to it. Let me get in closer so you can see. First, I'm going to protect my pixels by clicking Protect Alpha. Then I'm going to get my gradient tool and pick two kinds of blues. One kind of blue is already picked, and then I'm going to get like a darker blue. Whoops, not black. And you have to switch your colors around, otherwise you'll just keep changing your color over and over and over. But we want two colors, two blues, and then we'll fade it across for a little shading. Subtle change, there's before, here's after. If I draw my line too short, it's too harsh, so I have to draw it from one side of the circle almost to the other side, or if you want it mostly dark, you can do that, but you need to pull it kind of across your shape. And I'll get my drawing tool again and make sure that it's on freehand so I can draw. Actually, you can do line too, line would be fine. And on the rocket, there's these two little shiny lines this glare on the window. I'm going to draw one line there. If you want to make your pencil thinner, you can take that down to three and draw a second line with some little shinies. If you don't like that way, another way to do it is you get your diagonal grid. Remember, you can click the dot and you can change the angle of the grid. Once you get it in place, you can draw anywhere. Oops, I'm on line. You can, with freehand, draw anywhere, but it'll only go in those diagonal lines. So whichever one you like better. We're going to do that same kind of treatment to the top of our rocket, the pointy end. So I'm going to find my pointy ended layer. Protect the pixels. Grab my airbrush. I find the airbrush works a little easier because then you can control where the shading is. And I'm going to select a darker color. Did I wait? Let me double check. Maybe I used a multiply layer. Open that up. Doot, 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 doot. Yeah, no, I painted right on it. Okay. Good to know that I'm doing the things the same way. So on my pointy ended layer, protecting the pixels, and I'm just going to color the edges. Oops, you gotta make sure that your opacity is up on your brush. If it just looks dirty and not like shading, you're going to push your color more dark and a little bit toward blue. You can even pick up one of the blue colors out in space here. Add a little bit of that. We'll add the shiny glow part later on a different layer, just like we did with the planet. Then next we're going to put on these fins at the other end. The one that's facing us is super easy because it's just a rectangle. So I'm going to go up to my little pull down menu again and click on the rectangle and decide how big I want my fins to be. Maybe about that big. Oops, got to make sure I'm on a new layer or that my layer doesn't have the pixels protected so that when I draw my rectangle, it actually sticks. Whoops, make sure you're on the right tool. I want my pen. I want red. I want rectangle on the right layer. Let's try it one more time. Third time's the charm. Boom, there we go. Fill that in, but I'm not sure why it's not filling in the whole thing. Crazy. So 
So there's one. And then take a look at our reference again. We've got these ones on the sides and we are going to use a special brush for that. The symmetry brush. So down in my long list of brushes here, way down at the bottom somewhere, we'll have the symmetry brush. And in the brush control window, which if you don't have it open yet, go to window and you'll find brush control. You'll see that you can specify the base point by control click. So I'm going to hold down my control key and click right in the center of my first fin here. Go over to the side and when I start drawing, you'll see that it'll draw the other one for me. So they will be exactly the same. Let's say you don't like that shape, just control V, it's still there, so we can do it again. I can even hold down shift if you want this one to be super straight. But we do have to connect the shape so that when we fill it in with the paint bucket, it won't bleed all over the place. And then you can clean them up individually if you need to. I think my middle one is a little bit thick. I think I'll take off just a little bit. So I'm taking my dotted marquee tool. I'm going to select a little bit on this side. Delete. Select a little bit on the other side. Delete. Yeah, that looks a little better. And we're going to add the same shading like we did to the tip of the rocket. I'm going to need my airbrush. Select a dark blue color, probably from your space sky, but make sure it's pretty dark, like almost black. Make sure that your pixels are protected by Protect Alpha. And then you can use your airbrush and you can add some shading here and there. If it gets too dark too quickly, you can just slide your opacity down. Same thing with the yellow part. I'm just going to click over to the layer that has the body of my rocket. Click on the Protect Alpha so that I can't draw outside of these pixels. Get my original color. Kind of draw the letter L so I get a duller yellow. And if I want to shift it a little bit towards the blue, that usually helps because our background is all blue and purple. And then I'll just paint in the edges a little bit of shading. And then to propel this rocket, we've got some fire coming out. But I don't want to draw the fire over my rocket, so I'm going to need a new layer at the very bottom of my list. I'm going to get a new layer, call this fire, and just drag it, click and drag, below my rocket. For a fiery texture, you got a couple of options. First is the analog brush that has sort of a smoky, let me get it bigger so you can see it. That's kind of a rough, bubbly kind of texture. That's the one that I use for this fire. Whoops, where's my other rocket? You can see this bumpy texture on the edge. That's the brush I used. Or Get rid of this fire. You can also use the thorn brush. The thorn brush makes more of, let's get it big enough, 
makes more of like an explosive kind of fiery texture. Probably look better if I chose orange and not green. So that has some fiery texture if you want it more erratic. Whatever kind of fire you do, you're generally going to have, let's get my demo back up here, you're generally going to have brighter yellow in the center and then orange on the outside. So no matter which brush you use, I like to start with the orange, the darker color. Yeah, I'm going to use that analog one again, I like that one. Get your brush nice and big. Oops, not that big. I want to be able to make a nice little trail of fire and just adjust my pressure to get different shapes. So if I'm going lightly, I only get a little bit. And if I press hard, it's super thick. I'll change my color to a brighter yellow, super duper bright, and make the inside smaller. Don't go all the way to the edge. Leave that orange outline. Places like this where the yellow gets too close to the edge, you can either thicken up your orange or you can just erase some of your yellow. You can have a little... Oops, Little pieces of flame coming off too, if you like. Grab a little yellow, put a little yellow in there. Once you like your rocket, we are going to take all of our layers. I'm going to hold down shift so that all of them are blue. Control T. Well, that doesn't work in this program. It works in Photoshop. All right, we won't do that. Instead, we'll have to put them into a folder. So I'm going to make a new folder with that little folder button right in the middle. Call this a rocket. And I want to move all of my layers into the rocket. So I'm going to highlight them all by holding shift. All of them are blue. And then I'll click and drag right into rocket and all of them should pop inside. So when I close the rocket folder, all of them go into the folder and off of my list. And when I open it back up, let me make my window bigger so you can see there's all my layers. So with this highlighted, I should be able to hit control T and rotate my rocket to fly through outer space wherever I want it to fly. Maybe you don't want it covering up your planets. Maybe you want to cover up a little bit of one planet, something like that. You can have it flying back home to Earth if you want. Maybe I'll have it going this way. When you like it, you hit Enter. And then we will add one final layer, like we have been for pretty much everything, the glow layer. We'll say OK and turn that to overlay. Grab pure white. Get your airbrush. And then wherever you want it to be extra shiny, like in the fire here, maybe on part of the rocket, just add a little bit there to brighten it up. Whoops, not that much. You can also experiment with what happens when you actually have a color instead of a bright white. You can see that it changes the color slightly. We might try like a purpley, whoops, a purpley pink. 
on the tip of the rocket and on the fins. Whoop, wrong button. Not my Windows button. There we go. You can get a bright yellow. Shine up your rocket body there. Get a little blue on the window. And voila, we have our rocket. But let's say you get here and you're like, eh, I wish I hadn't made it yellow. Just click on your layer that has only the yellow. Then we're going to go to filter, hue, and I'll just move the top one so that I can change it to blue, I can change it to orange, pink, blue, and you might get over to the purple and go, I like the purple, but it's too bright. There's a brightness slider at the bottom so I can make it darker, I can make it more pastel, I can make it more vivid in color, I can make it more gray. Maybe we will, oh, I kind of like the silver rocket better. So you can just shift it over to gray. But no, my glow colors don't match. I'm gonna erase that glow color. Whoops, get a bigger eraser. Erase that glow color there. And get my airbrush again. Get pure white. And on my glow layer, I'll put just some pure white glow. Or maybe I'll get some bright purple glow now that it's purple. Oops, it's too dark. Let's go to bright purple. Get my blue shine back. I like the white better. It's control Z, Control Z, Control Z. That's what I love about Fire Pack. It is Control Z forever. Oops, too far. So when you go back up to your arrows, click forward. Maybe I can even just change the color of my glow by going Control U and shift the hue of that as well. Maybe, maybe not. Oh, that's not bad. I kind of like that. You can delete your center line. We don't need that anymore. So I'm going to go to my center line layer and hit the little trash can button. It might be hiding off to the side there sometimes. My window isn't big enough. There we go. And that 